Right in the mail, MS Sex Games from Japan. Collecting without fail those shoot 'em ups, and that's the plan. He doesn't just collect them, he also codes them too. Join us and we'll go on electric adventures with you. Hey YouTube, Electric Adventures here with a package. Got a bit of weight to it from the UK. So this is from my uh, a friend of mine in the UK. Um, he has uh, basically been purchasing these games in lots. Um, he's, I mean, they're for the MSX. I'll say that out, out thing. And there's certain titles he's after. And then he buys these lots and he has leftover ones. And if I don't have them in my collection, he's gathered them together in a box over a bit of time and sent them over to me. That's the brown paper on the outside. I'm missing my package opening knife at the moment. I'm not sure where it's gone. Shop somewhere. Just move that out of the way. So we have um, some punk IPA <laughs> from the UK. Yeah, how do I get into this box? Let's use lots of tape, which is good. Be careful because this is a scalpel, not a normal knife. Now there are actually quite a few titles in here. And just looking at it, I remember there is a title for something other than the MSX, and that's probably the first one I'll get out. So, um, this is a game that I used to have back in the day, and I don't know what happened to my copy. I used to love playing this game. Um, my memory probably clouds. I mean, I, I enjoyed it back in the day. Oh, we'll see if I can... Um, I haven't actually fired up this machine for a little while, so we'll see whether I can play it. This is Carrier Command for the Atari ST. I actually really enjoyed playing this game. It's a field polygon um, sort of game. Um, I don't know what, I can't remember what I did with my original copy, and I didn't have a copy version of it. So inside, we have a little bit of a guide sheet, an original disc, which we'll have to see if it works. If it doesn't, I can make myself another one. Um, we have a save game disc, maybe, or maybe another actual... Uh, cracked copy, and we have in here it comes with a cassette tape. That's, so the box looks slightly different than the version I had back in the day. This is probably a different edition, and it comes with a carry command theme on a cassette tape as well. So all very, very interesting. So I haven't done a video on an Atari ST game for a while. Um, and uh, it'll be good fun seeing if we can get that working. Alright, so that's the first one. The rest, I think, should all be, I believe, MSX titles. We'll see what happens. Okay. Now, they're going to be UK tape titles. But um, that doesn't mean I don't want to put them in my collection. So we have, by Bulldog Software, I've never seen this one before, one called Streaker. So it does look like a spectrum conversion. It's often very hard to tell what what system. The screenshots from on the front. I've never heard of that one, never played that one. Uh, next we actually have two titles. Psycho Pigs and Titanic. As my cat comes in, he wants to join in and see what the games are. Um, I want to the MS. Oh, here we go. This actually is actually for the Spectrum. So we have a Los Angeles SWAT. We have that one. And the Magnificent Seven, also for the Spectrum. Chuck in a few bonus ones here, I reckon, to fill the box up. Uh, also for the Spectrum, we've got Pro Skateboard Simulator. Uh, 
switching back to the MSX I haven't heard of this one either, it's Colosseum just because they, some of these might be spectrum conversion doesn't make them bad games um, weird writing, so Paris Dakar It's got a motorbike on there as a some sort of racing game, which could be cool. We have by Mitsubishi System Demonstration plus Smash Out and Othello. So three games on there. I've never seen a tape from Mitsubishi before, but that obviously came with their um with their systems. Um this one's El Misterio del Nilo, so it's a Spanish title for the MSX. They range from atrocious to okay, just like some of the UK MSX titles. Now, this is a French one. Uh, French is fun. I said all sorts of titles here. Uh, back to the Spectrum. Black Hawk. Never played. I've never played any of these games so far. Um, ooh, cool. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. For the M6. Oh, I had this game back in the day. And it's actually not a bad game. It's Disc Warrior by Alligator Software for the MSX. Well, I like playing it back in the day. I don't know what happened to my original copy, so it's really nice having that one. Uh, another Spectrum game, Mickey Mouse, the computer game. Bubble wrap. Um, so for the Sinclair. Uh, ZX Spectrum Science Horizon Survival. He's chucked a few of those in here. Now, this particular black box. So this would come with a book on the front of it, and this is the one main one I know about, and it is none other than a proper copy of The Hobbit for the MSX. So it would be bound, come bound, that's why the black box doesn't look very attractive, with a copy of the book. I still have my edition of the book. Don't know what happened to my um, tape of the um, game. And it's a cassette tape and has gra so it's a, a text adventure but with graphics and it's really well done. Played it a lot back in the day um, and copies of this can get very expensive. Um, so very happy to have that in my collection. Right, we have uh, okay, we're switching systems again for the Commodore 64 we have Snooker. He's chucked a few extra ones in there. Uh, so there's a number MSX title I haven't played it before. Uh, Panzer Attack. I used to have a um, really nice Panzer game for the for DOS actually that I really enjoyed playing. Um, oh, and here are Bug Bites sort of. I'm not sure whether these were official releases of the Namcot releases. I think I've got this on cartridge, but it's Warp Warp. At the very least, I've got the um, Coleco uh, Lazy Port. But Warp Warp's actually quite a good fun game. Um, so at least we know we've got one game that's pretty good. And then we have a box of this. Ah, right, that's right. So, these are games. So this is a favour. These are games that he'd like me to um, see if I can get working on my Atari ST. So I won't go through them because they're, they're his and they're just loose discs. So that's fine. Reciprocal favours across the long pond. So there are lots of titles there. It's going to take um, you know, a fair bit of effort to go through those, but it'll be good fun. Um, might be a little bit of time gap between when I'm recording this bit and when I record the gameplays, but um, I'll get into them over the next days and uh, let's go try them out.
Right, so here we go, Colosseum. Um, <coughs> sorry. I'm going to go before. I tried to select joystick. But it doesn't seem to think. So what I'll do, I'll try redefine keys. Space. Up, down. Left, right. Pause. P. Go ahead with keys. Just going to do that redefine one more time. Space. Up, down, left, right. Ah. Go over again. music. It's obviously a spectrum conversion, so I press to the right to speed up. That's better now, I can go up and down. So you have to avoid Oh, oh I ran door rock as well. Um, so you have to push the other ones into things by the looks of it. Oh, ah. it's pretty um, sensitive. All right, so for the big jump there, I got interrupted again. Finally, figure this out a bit. Oh, I should have gone the other way. So, intrinsically, it's not a too bad little game. Probably deserves a bit better game run than I've given it, but there you go. There's our first one. Let's see if I can get some of the others to load. After an extremely long load, Paris Dakar. Very 
Maybe I'm going to be able to do El Mysterio del Nino. Nilo? Nilo? Alright, we'll try a joystick. spectral conversion but um don't seem to have any control. I'm not sure whether I did that or not. I reckon that's an MPC. See a girl up in the top corner there. So select like the character. Do you remain? So I mean it looks quite interesting and that music was quite good. Um may have to leave that to another time until I can find some translated instructions. But um, I mean, it's quite. I mean, of quite obviously a converted spectrum game. But um, for a spectrum game, it's actually quite good. You can see that character passing behind things and things like that. So, and the music was pretty good. <coughs> All right, we'll leave that one to another time. I'll try the next title. This next one's the Mitsubishi demo tape. Uh, first one has a basic demo, so we'll give that a go. Some of these demos that came with systems were quite clever. Let's see if it does that itself. <coughs> <coughs> I me. 
い<笑>
once again, all done in basic. So this is pretty cool. It would be good for you know sellers to have this playing in a shop demonstrating the machine's capabilities. That'll do this. It's getting a bit long, so we'll move on to the um, the two little sample games that come on this tape. So I'll be back in a minute. Oh, here's Smash. Written in basic again. Looks pretty good. Oops. <laughs> So moves at a reasonable pace. The collision detection is a little rough on the borders. I probably could have made the ball a bit bigger and not hurt anything. Obviously, once you get a certain way, it removes those safety boundaries. This is actually quite an acceptable version of breakout. Oops. And shows what you could do with your own um, code. It's got the concept of levels and stuff by the looks of it. Ooh. And then back just move closer, see that? And it's gotten smaller. And they've got ah, an angle in there as well. Yeah, okay, so the more consecutive balls you hit, the bat levels goes up. Ah, oh, I've got to watch those bounces. That's not bad. And look, it even has a demo mode as well. All right, let's try the Othello out. Let me go with Othello. I'm interested to see how this compares to my own Othello that I wrote back in the day. So the idea is Othello is every move um, you need to flip at least one piece of the opponents and you do that by putting a piece either side. So if I put a piece here it's going to flip this one or I can put a piece here it'll flip this one or I can't put a piece there because it's not going to flip and I put a piece there, I can't put a piece there or I can put a piece there. Right? So I'm going to put a piece here. So that leads him with one. He goes there, so they're all blue now. He's only got a limited number of moves. He's got two moves that'll get him two pieces, but this early the main strategy with Othello is first access to the sides. It's obviously going through a few um, 
algorithm it has got there to try and determine the best move it can. Because I went first, I'm going to be the one that has to breach the um, inner sanctum area. And he's obviously going to go on that empty square there. Hmm. Go there. So this now gives him access to the outer sides. Outer sides are good holding points but the squares next to the corners are bad so he can either go for that one next to there which he didn't do that's interesting and you see like oh i could go for this square but you don't want to give the other person an opportunity to get a corner square give myself an opportunity to get a side square myself. Okay, I'm going to go get this side. Right, he's gone there, but then I can immediately do this. So I've got a nice solid block there now. see where he goes. Okay, he's gone there, which is actually given away on the side. So I'm currently leading, but the game can turn around quite quickly. sudden we're level again. Square next to it now. Yep. Okay, I'm going to go for this square. I'm just going to be careful.
these two now. dangerous because he can go and get that other corner and I'm actually nothing I can do to stop him at the moment so so this will put him in the lead I think I've lost. Don't think I've ever from this, so it's pretty playing a pretty good game. Plays pretty decent day game. That's actually quite a decent game of Othello. Alright, let's try the next game. Right, next we have Panzer Attack. I uh, had a basic loading screen and it's. Uh, not sure if it's going to be machine code or basic. So far, I'd say basic. Read instructions. Oh, who needs instructions? Let's blindly forge our way through. <laughs> this case is used to locate sites, then press coordinates for it. No, we, we can do that. We can do that. I need a key. Right. No, I've lost. Okay. No. So, obviously, strategy game. We need to move tanks and supplies and things like that. contain all Germans at all costs. So this sort of game <clears throat> I would have absolutely loved back in the day. Um, my um, friends and I used to make our own board games and um, you know strategy games uh, making all the, uh, all the air and the tanks and everything like that make giant maps lots of pins and pieces of cardboard so computerized versions of those were uh, would have been absolute gold. Enter orders. Input. So, yeah. Mobilize. Enter division number. So I take it that's the numbers on the blue ones, maybe? US Army, third. We'll, we'll just move the first one and see what happens. Okay. 
probably could have done without the slow text that yeah so there's one I that could get very very um, very very old very fast okay so we're here now how far we can move And then it's a turn-based strategy game, and we continue from there. I'm not going to play it um, here and now because um, yeah, this will take ages, and um, will probably be very not that interesting for you guys. But um, I look here they come. Oh, um, but it, it actually looks pretty good. I reckon I would have, I could have easily spent hours playing this sort of game back in the day, days. More than likely, I would lose horribly if I tried to show this to you now. But a very interesting game and nice to have. All right, let's try the next one. Here we go, Warp Warp. This is actually pretty much the only one of the Namcot titles I'm missing on cartridge. So it's good getting this one. I'm not 100% sure whether these Bug Bite releases of these um, Namcot titles are official. Uh, the covers are very basic. But um, it's actually cool to have a physical version of this one, the one I'm missing. Shoot the bugs. Oops, and they shoot at you. You notice the number of enemies at the side. I'm not sure that oops, when that flashes, I'm supposed to go on my wall. going across the top of Space Invaders, wasn't it? One left. Whoa. Oh! <coughs> okay. generous on the lives. We might just have another quick go. As I know the whole idea of Warp Warp has another screen that you go to. I was too busy. Blasting guys to Like a bomber man, okay. That was a bit silly. Oh dear, how we got to this screen. 
I'm not doing very well. Oh, oh, I didn't mean to go that way. But as you can see, it's a game that's got a bit to it and is actually uh, quite interesting and fun. I'll definitely be playing that one a bit more later. Alright, let's try the next title of Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. <coughs> oh, <mate. coughs> this is supposed to be quite good. And I'm, I'm sure I've actually played it before too. So, it's a 3D isometric game, obviously converted from the Spectrum, but these games were all very... Okay, so we've got tank controls, right. And jump. Actually, that is it a fair clip. Now, we can touch those. Oh, I see. We've got a time ticking down, which is... Six percent, um, and I didn't do any tomatoes, so very poor job by me. Once again, really should read instructions before I play games. But that one actually looks really good, um, and I, I used to love these isometric games. One of my favourites was Batman, um, and also Alienate. Um, so it's all in that genre. So a very well done game, um, ported across from Spectrum, but it actually runs quite quickly. So this is just a plain MSX one I'm playing this on. So I quite like that one. Alright, let's try that. And next, and very happy to have this one back in my collection. This is actually one of the games I owned back in the day and played lots. Hopefully I can remember how to play it, but I thought this game was fantastic back in the day. Um, and Alligator Software actually did quite good MSX versions. Oh, the other one that I really like from them is Blagger. Um, I liked many minor games. Four, let's press start. Okay. So they're using some, a mixture of sprites and um, character graphics. It's a 3D main one. We can actually throw our discs at quite a decent speed. Um, it's been a while since I've played it though, so I can't remember exactly what I'm supposed to do. I'm sure I have to find some things. Oh, that's a force field. See that? I'm going to go through that at the moment. Lost about 
half my health, so I do need to be careful. Zone 4. Oh, there is a key. Right. Do a bit of a raid out there. I wonder if I can. No. Zone three. Let's see if we can find a door. Well, actually, that force field. I'm sure that the key will now open. Oh. Or I could walk into it and kill myself. It's been a little while. Agent disease. Completion factor. 16%. <laughs> um, but as you can see, it's actually not a bad little game. Um, and, you know, it's a nice title screen and things like that. Um, so a bit of an explore, find the keys. Um, I can't remember the actual end game, but I can remember spending hours playing back in the day. I've quite obviously have not played it for some time. This is one of my original, original games. Um, I don't know what happened to my original copy. I've still got my original copy of Minder as an example, but not the copy of this. So I don't know what I did with it. All right. Um, one more game to have a go at on the MSX. So we'll tr load up The Hobbit. Right. So next we have The Hobbit. Press the at key. Uh, oh, you can do it about pictures. Well, we, of course, want pictures. And this game is renowned for the wonderful not only great story but the great art as you can see drawn quite well um, so it's done a look already right you see Thorin says hurry up Gandalf Gandalf is carrying a curious amount of Thorin the wooden chest Thorin says, so hurry up. Oops. You open the gun when Gandalf goes east, Thorin waits. I've played this for a very long time, but I can remember playing as heaps. And it's just got lovely graphics, really good descriptions. Dreary Hills will go east. There's also, you press a key and you get more description. Um, to the west there is a round green door, visible is at east, north, north. You see Gandalf. Gandalf takes the curious map. Thorin enters. Okay, east. I said, we'll just have a bit of a look around. We're not really going to try and solve anything. You're at the troll clearing. Oh, cool. You see the hideous troll. The troll is carrying the large key. The vicious troll. So hideous troll, vicious troll. The foreign enters. The hideous troll says, "Blimey, looks like. Look at this. Can you, Kokoman?" The vicious troll says, "You can try, but you wouldn't make it above a mouthful." Um, southeast, southwest, southeast to north. Let's try north. So we're just going to have a bit of a look around. It's quite clever how it does the um, colour in all in black and white and then does cut then colours it in. Hidden path of the troll's footprints. Um, to the north there is the heavy rock door. Thorin enters. Can we open the door? We'll drop it in. Oops. Door is locked. Yeah, because we need the key and the trolls have got the key. So we can only go south. Back to the trolls. You are dead. <laughs> yeah, his foul gluttony has killed the hideous troll. You are dead. You have mastered two point five percent of this adventure. So I bombed out really quickly, but um, this video is probably getting long enough. Um, I am extremely pleased to get this game uh, back again. I'll, I'll probably. I didn't really own a copy back in the day. I probably had a copy of it. Um, obviously, I have a copy of the book, 
Um, and I did play this a lot back in the day, and I think even my wife played uh, this game as well, so it brings back a lot of memories. And we did get some other titles from other systems in this lot, but this video is probably already far long enough, and obviously I love my MSX items. At some stage I might do some gameplays on those when I get time. But I hope all you guys have enjoyed this pick up and play video. There's a little bit of time between the pick up and the play. Um, but um, yeah, it's all come together now. Alright, I'm Electric Adventures. Thanks to all my subscribers. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.